Hey everybody, it's Cindy the Scrapologist. I'm still trying to get over this plague that I caught, <clears throat> so excuse me in advance for my voice. And I don't have the energy really to work on a major project still, so I'm doing, um, I'm in my studio and working on some smaller things, and so I can take little breaks here or there. So this is a good idea, this is a good, um, rainy day project or if you just don't feel like making something that requires a lot of brain power I'm um, just um, working with some old books that I tore apart and making some some uh, little pocket pages so I thought I would just demonstrate one for you and give you the measurements so you can uh, make these if you'd like to so let me switch the camera view and we'll do a quick video okay so this is one that I made this morning. It's just a pocket that you can put in an album or a junk journal or just an art journal. And it has a little Tim Holtz card inside. It's made from some old book pages. And I have some gesso on here and a rub on. And I did some sewing. And then a piece of um, ribbon up here. And they're really easy to make. So um, yesterday, I just kind of sat around and watched movies and um, deconstructed a bunch of old books that I have. And now I want, I have a ton of these papers that I want to use up. So um, that's why I decided to go ahead and make, um, where'd it go? Make these. So the first thing is th this uh, book paper that I'm using is this this book is I think this was like 1800s let's see yeah 1894 so it's very old and the paper is is not strong enough to just make these without backing them if you have a stronger thicker maybe newer book paper then you don't need to back it but I do put the book pages on to some craft paper these are scraps that I have left over from when I make mini albums I always keep these especially these square ones because they're a nice or these rectangular ones and because um, they're a nice shape but um, I I always keep these and so I'm going to use this to back these little pockets with. So I just cut out some pages from a from an old book. I always check to make sure. See, I had to throw this one away because this is about somebody getting murdered and warm blood is bubbling from his breast. So <laughs> we don't want that one. Um, we do not want that one. Let's see. I mean, most of these books in the 1800s don't have stuff like that. This one seems like it's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. Always check the content. <laughs> okay. So I've got my page. Set that aside. And then I have a glue stick. I have some Tim Holtz images. Um, you can use anything you want to, to put inside here, but I'm using Tim Holtz images today because I had these laying around and I want to I want to use them up. I have some crackle accents, which is optional. I used the crackle accents up here because I wanted it to look like a broken glass sort of look but it didn't really turn out like I was expecting on here so um, I when you use this on certain things it will make a cracked glass look I don't know if you can see that more light there we go come on camera you can focus you can do it There. You can kind of see. There we go. Yay! Seems to do better with my fingers there. <laughs> well, you saw it for a second. Anyway, um, 
yeah, didn't didn't really work. So I'm not going to be using that again. And then I have some white gesso primer. I have my little seashell full of words. If you watch my videos, you know that sometimes when I'm tired, it's been a long day and I don't want to do a lot with my brain, I cut, I go through my old books and I cut out um, different phrases. And this says, sing as though no one can hear you. And I just kind of cut out phrases. These are all different different words that were that came in a scrapbook paper that I bought. So I like to keep all of my little sayings um, in my little seashell here that is a special memory for me from a trip that my husband and I went on. And I have that up on a shelf up above me. And I'm going to be pulling some words out of there. And for this part here, I am using rub-ons today because I have some rub-ons that I want to get rid of. I'm really trying to get rid of stuff in my craft studio um, because I have too much stuff and um, yeah, I don't feel organized at all. Um, so, <laughs> so I'm trying to use up my, <clears throat> you've, you've probably heard me say I'm trying to not buy anything new. I'm trying to only shop my room and what I have in here. So anyway, I have these rub-ons that I'm using, but you can use uh, some stamps. You can stamp on this white gesso if you want to do that. So this back part measures, if you want to make it the same size, it's four by four and a quarter. And then I happen to have the crocodile, and this one is come on can barely see it there I need there we go I need more light over here angle so it has the angle on one side and the photo on the other side I'm using the angle one and I just do the two sides to kind of make it look like a tag you could round the corners too, that would be nice. And then just a regular hole punch. Actually, I should punch the hole after, sorry. Okay, so then I just have my glue stick. And this glue stick is really gooey. I need to, I need to run up to the dollar store and get a few more, but cover the whole thing because you don't want your your paper bubbling up and then I just let's read it let's see going on a little journey I have your face here in my heart that sounds nice we'll put we'll use that and just put it on and burnish it And I like to just turn it over and tear it off because I don't want a nice even edge. I mean, it's pretty even when you tear it off like that, but there's a little bit of jaggedness, get jaggedness to it. And um, and I tore, I tore it too far in there, but that's okay. I actually don't mind that. And I, believe it or not, <clears throat> I sometimes keep these if I'm going to be layering some things, but today I don't I don't need to keep those and then I have my trusty Tim Holtz vintage photo and I'm going to ink it up around the edges you know I always do that and now I'm going to punch my hole I usually just eyeball it okay and then for the pocket part that piece is two and a quarter by four and we're going to do the same thing now on um, I keep losing it here it is on this one this page had a little poem on it right here so I put the gesso around it so that you can read the poem and this has a little prayer on it 
it says, Lord, in the morning thou shalt hear my voice ascending high. To thee will I direct my prayer. To thee lift up mine eye. So I'm going to put that here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to gesso around this little prayer here. You can use glue, regular glue, you can use your ATG gun, whatever you want to use for your adhesive. But I just find glue sticks to be really easier to work with when I'm doing this kind of thing. <clears throat> if I want to go downstairs, get out of my studio a little bit and go sit in the kitchen or something, it's easier to carry a glue stick and a couple of little supplies than than bringing a whole bunch of stuff down with me, my ATG gun and all that. So that's why I have some glue sticks on hand. Okay, and there we go. Ink it up. <coughs> Okay, then next I would take this over to the sewing machine and I would sew around three or four sides. Okay, but I'm not going to do that now because it would be off camera. And then I'm going to take just a tiny bit of this gesso. And I'm not a mixed media person. I don't know a lot about gesso and painting and things like that but what this does is it's a primer so once you put it down you can put other things on top of it that's what that's what gesso does this particular gesso this is um, studio gesso by Ranger I hope it's gesso and not gesso I'm pretty sure it's gesso an artist quality primer for canvas, wood, metal, plastic, chipboard, paper, and fabric. And you all probably know much more about this than I do. This is about all I do with it. <laughs> so I'm just going to do it real thin because I want the, the words of the book page underneath to still show through. So I'm just doing a little bit and I'm doing it kind of messy. I don't want it to be a complete like box around this poem. I just want it to sort of help that poem stand out. There. Clean this off. I have been really lazy about cleaning off my brushes, and I have a bathroom here in my studio, or right next to it, but <laughs> they're so inexpensive that I just I get lazy about it and then I have to buy new ones. I'm going to try not to do that. I'm going to try to take better care of my paint brushes. Okay. This is going to take a few minutes to dry, a few seconds. It doesn't take long actually. But in the meantime, we'll find a little image. I could do one of these to put as a tag. I have this one already sewn, but I think it's going to be, it might not be too wide. It might fit in there if I'm real careful with the tape, but I could, I could put a couple tickets in there. Um, I could put one of these. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to try this one. And if that doesn't work, I'll use the smaller one here. And I think that's, normally I'd wait a little bit longer for it to dry, but I think
think it's okay. I, so let me find a word. I think... Hmm. I, well, I don't know if I want a word since I have that. Hmm. Because what you could do, if, if it didn't have the poem there, I would probably put a word there and a stamp or something there. But since I have the poem, actually, I'm not going to use my words today. I think I'm just going to find a rub-on that I kind of like. I think I'm going to put this one in the bottom right corner. I think I will do that. These are old um, basic gray. I don't know if you guys have been around as long as I have doing this. <laughs> this is from 2007. And they used to have, this is the, the boxer line, they used to have, a they would have a paper collection and then they would have rub-ons, cards. I really liked their paper. It's kind of how I started out scrapbooking using their, using their kits. But I have a lot of these rub-ons. Rub-ons sort of fell out of fashion for a while. I'm going to definitely be using these. How pretty are these? The fall. It's fall here in Maine and these are gorgeous, really pretty. So I'm probably going to make a bunch of these bookcase cages, bookcases, book pockets, um, using these fall images. How pretty would this be with, you know, on a on a book page? Sorry, I'm off camera here. <coughs> Sorry, let me get a little sip of something. Okay, so let's just do this. And like I said, you can you can stamp on this gesso, you can paint on it, whatever you want to do to decorate your pocket. You don't even have to do the gesso. You could do your rub on or your stamp directly onto the book page. But it might be a little busy if you do that. It's the only thing. And these are old and the gesso is still a little damp, so I'm really having to press to get this off. I think I got it. There. Love it. Love that. Okay, and then like I said, I would go over to the sewing machi machine and sew it. Kind of smoothed out the gesso a little too much there. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to stick it on right now, but then all you do is I use my um, double sided tape, quarter inch, and then just put your tape along three sides. Don't put it along your top. And then you stick it on like this. And then I'm just using a little piece of trim for um, seam binding, I think this is. It's funny how when I'm sick, all my words leave me. I can't remember the name of anything. <laughs> I remember my name. That's good. <laughs> if I start forgetting that, then I know I really... Time to go to the hospital. <laughs> okay. So this is what it would look like. And actually, you know what? That's a little too white for me. So I'm going to just touch it up a little bit with my ink. And we could even draw a little thing around the prayer. But I, 
in my mind, it really needs that sewing to distinguish the front from the back. If you're going to use the book page on the on the front of the cover and I use a book page on the back, it's blending in too much. It I think it really needs really needs the sewing. And actually, we can ink up the edge here a little bit, bit more too. And then I would just take this image that I sewed around and stick it in, and there's my pocket. So then you can just glue the back of them and stick them on a book page. Let me make believe here we're sticking them on here. So here's a junk journal that I'm still working on. I'm not really working on it. I just, I don't know. I love it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I haven't been able to put it in my shop. So let's pretend that we're sticking this in the junk journal. We're just going to put some adhesive down and put it there. Or you can even just put adhesive at the bottom and have a third, a second tuck spot here. So you'd have your pocket here and your pocket here. And it would look super nice on any of these pages in your junk journal. And this one. So there, that didn't take long at all. 20 minutes. And actually, I could sit here and make a whole bunch of these in 20 minutes if I wasn't talking, because what I would do is I would um, mass produce these. So first I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut all of these out to size and then start gluing and then start gessoing and and then you can really crank out a bunch of them if you sort of work in a factory factory line. So um, there, uh, that's all I have for you today and thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe below if you hit the little if you click on the little bell below then whenever I'm live or whenever I post a new video it will send you a little notification so it would be lovely if you would do that and uh, so you don't miss any of my videos and give me a comment or a thumbs up I would really appreciate that as well head over to Facebook and see us over at the Papercraft fan club that's a real um, real fun place to post all of your paper crafts of any sort not just junk journals not just mini albums anything that you do with paper it's a real fun and supportive group head on over there and um, I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching bye bye